Uh, Senator Booker. Uh, Senator Booker. Uh, thank you. Chairman, can you hear me? Chairman? Yes, and to our witnesses, we have two more senators and we'll be done, and I appreciate your patience. Senator Booker. I, I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Chairman, and have, I appreciate listening to this, to this hearing. Um, I really want to bring, uh, just focus back to what I think is why we're here, which is the 2020 election. And I've been saying in this committee for many months now about the, the tragic consequences of us normalizing things that should express considerable outrage. There's not a person on this committee on either side that doesn't know who the next president of the United States will be. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, will be the president and vice president of the United States come January 20th. But what is going on right now is dangerous, and it is a threat to our democracy. Uh, for the first time in American history, we are seeing a sitting president of the United States make wild and baseless accusations that undermine the democratic process, that don't just delegitimize it. What the president of the United States is doing is trying to thwart our democracy. As we speak, Donald Trump is waging an all-out war on the truth and our democratic systems. And one of his weapons of choice in this disinformation war is social media, and specifically uh, the two gentlemen here, uh, their platforms, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you have the tools to prevent him from weaponizing these platforms to degrade our democracy and our democratic institutions and to cause such damage that even after January 20th, it could be one of the first times that millions of Americans think and believe that this election uh, was uh, what is basis baselessly being charged by Donald Trump. And so let's be clear on what's happened. Donald Trump's shameful uh, and shameless lies that are persisting about voter fraud and the outcome of this election were some of the most engaged content on social media in the days after the election. By one measure, during the week after the election, his posts on Facebook made up all, every single one of the top, most, top 10 most engaged posts in the United States, and 22 out of 25 of the top most engaged posts in our country. And his number one post, the top of them all, was a false declaration of victory. On Twitter, his, false, uh, his, his tweet on falsely claiming victory was viewed uh, by millions of users. This was and is not just a disinformation campaign by the President of the United States, but literally the most powerful person in our country doing an all-out assault on the constitutional ideal of a democracy that he was sworn to protect. So let's take a step back, because I, I, I think this would be bipartisan if we looked at what was happening in another country. If, if we saw, and I'm on the Foreign Relations Committee, and I know how we come together on issues like this, if a strong leader, strongman leader of a democracy had denied his loss in an election, in a democratic election, made consistent and constant baseless claims about fraud, if he fired military leaders while his foreign minister talked about a smooth transition of the defeated leaders next term, even potentially in jest, any government looking at this situation, including ours, uh, would be putting out statements urging calm and calling for the peaceful transition of power, for the rule of law, for the honoring of democratic norms and traditions. And so we're seeing concrete consequences right now of President Trump's rhetoric. Uh, we are actually in the midst of the fourth largest mass casualty event in American history. This is not just something that should not be treated with calm and normalcy, but we all, people who believe in this country, should be standing up and talking about the consequences. We have his political appointee, the General Service Administrator, refusing to designate Joe Biden as president-elect and provide the transition team the resources mandated by federal law. It was not that long ago that the 9-11 Commission said uh, that one of the things that undermined our ability to meet the terroristic threats to our country uh, happened because of a transition that was uh, undermined, or excuse me, the tr a transition that did not happen in the normal course. President Trump's actions since Election Day should shock all of us, all of us who care about the welfare of our democracy, who care about our norms. Uh, and I hope the platforms uh, here uh, can maintain the highest levels of vigilance. And so to the gentleman uh, before us today, I'd like to ask specifically, 
Um, have you taken any steps to modify your platform's algorithms to ensure that blatantly false election disinformation posted by election officials and specifically the most powerful person in the United States, Donald Trump, isn't amplified? That his posts that might get a lot of interactions uh, uh, that are dead wrong don't somehow get boosted by your algorithms. Uh, if you could both respond to that as quickly as possible. Senator, I'll, I'll go first, and, and I share your concern on this, and I, I think it's unfortunate that we had to uh, put in place a policy around premature or false declarations of victory, but, um, but we had to do that, and we, we anticipated this back in September when we put the policy in place, and a lot of what we're trying to do is help distribute reliable information, which we attach both to um, posts on the topic by um, by President Trump or um, any of the other candidates or, or, or elected officials who, who are talking on the subject. But more importantly, we put uh, that reliable information, including about election results, at the top of Facebook and Instagram for everyone to see. And that supersedes um, you know, what, what the algorithm or what news feed I, chooses I, to show. I appreciate that. I, I just like to get Jack's, this is information I know. Jack, if you want to just respond on the algorithm, excuse Mr. Dorsey, do you want to respond about the algorithms too? Do, do you have uh, specific measures that you're taking to prevent your algorithms from boosting uh, false content? Yeah, so, so many of the labels um, did change how the algorithms amplify content. And then... Uh, uh, you know, uh, President Trump right now is spreading dangerous misinformation about our electoral process. It's going on right now. Uh, and, and maybe if you guys, uh, if you gentlemen, would just cogently, uh, through this process, this ongoing process right now, are there steps you will be taking that, that you have not already delineated uh, as we are going into what could be very dangerous waters, unprecedented waters in this country? Is there any additional steps that you will be taking uh, right now, in the coming days or weeks, uh, to stop the further amplification and undermining uh, of our of our uh, of our democracy, we are we are heading potentially, depending upon the behavior of a president who's shown himself to be erratic. Uh, uh, are there steps you were prepared to take uh, in in the coming days and weeks to address uh, this misinformation that we are seeing is coming in an unrelenting manner? Senator, yes, so we're, 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 this is uh, unfortunately an eventuality that we, that we planned for. Um, and we've taken a number of steps, um, you know, not just including the fact-checking program that, that we've set up broadly, um, but we stopped recommending all civic and political groups as an example because of the risk of misinformation or, or, um, or harm growing there. We've temporarily paused all political ads because of a risk of of potential abuse or um, kind of inflaming tension or, or potential unrest or, or violence. Um, and there are a number of other steps that we've taken like this as well um, that we've done in other countries when there are risks of civil unrest um, and that, that we've shown have worked. So I, I'd be happy to follow yeah. up in, yes. in detail on sure. all of the steps that we're taking there. Oh, thank you. Your team has been, has been helpful. Uh, Mr. Dorsey, any new steps that you want to give me? And, and I'm now treading on the indulgence of the chairman. If you could be really cogent, any new steps? Um, we're we're going to continue to remain vigilant around uh, our enforcement of civil integrity. I think it's really important that we that we stay agile and that we learn. So we need to learn about like the effectiveness of of this work and and how to carry it forward. Right, and and the the, the, the chairman would indulge me in one more uh, sort of question uh, to Mr. Zuckerberg. I was really pleased um, uh, that the group Stop the Steal, which was a group formed on Facebook with disinformation trying to delegitimize the election, uh, I was grateful that you all uh, suspended that account uh, after 24 hours. But I'm, I'm concerned about what lessons you've learned, because clearly outside groups like the Center for Countering Digital Hate flagged that group's posts uh, containing uh, calls to violence uh, hours before uh, Facebook did. And I'm wondering what, what you all have learned about speed. Uh, there's an old saying that a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its pants on. Uh, 
what does Facebook really factor in uh, in terms of uh, speed and trying to combat surges of disinformation about this group? And, and, and maybe another example, I, I, an additional sort of addendum to that question, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, um, you know, Mr. Bannon, Twitter, for example, permanently suspended Mr. Bannon's Twitter account. Uh, it suspended his show's Twitter account uh, after he made horrendous steps about acts of violence against Dr. Fauci and, and FBI Director Ray. Um, but, you, but not only, uh, ha I guess I'm just simply asking why would uh, Facebook not take uh, the similar uh, steps and similar stand? So, so Mr. Zuckerberg, very cogently, could you talk about that speed issue? And then I, I, when, these, when your platforms diverge, uh, I, I'm really wondering why one platform in Twitter saw that as a standard to remove, but you all uh, have left, uh, 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 did not follow in that decision. Thanks, Senator. I'm, I'm happy to address both of those. Uh, on speed, you're, you're certainly right that that's important. Uh, and part of what we uh, focus on is figuring out which, uh, which types of messages or things are going to go viral quickest. Um, because you, it's not just about trying to get to everything within you know, in five hours, for example. Um, it's actually much more important to get to the, the harms that are going viral quickly within an hour, even if some things that are probably not going to get much distribution at all um, might be deprioritized for a little bit longer. Um, so I think making sure that we stay on top of what are the hashtags, what are the groups, um, what are the messages, who are the uh, bad actors who are trying to spread this content. And as we see the threat evolving, um, we, we are typically able to uh, evolve and move faster as well. Um, so we're, we're, we're very focused on that. Thank you very and, um, much. Uh, uh, anything Mr. Else Chairman, if I can ask you yeah. just, I, I just want to give you an amen, uh, uh, <laughs> Chairman. Uh, uh, I, the, the last, second part of that question, I'd love to get on the record, but I just want to say to you, you mentioned earlier, and I know you said that uh, Chairman Graham will be chairman again, but I think you really said something really important earlier about the effects of social media platforms on our kids. Uh, University, I can cite many studies, like the University of Pittsburgh, who said that kids are on social media have about twice the, 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 yeah. the rates of eating disorders and yeah. image concerns. I just would really say, and I know that two gentlemen there would, would, would welcome the opportunity to come and discuss that, perhaps with other experts, but there's something really going on in terms of the self-esteem, well-being, and even flourishing of our children who are deeply affected by these platforms, whether you want to use a typical term like addiction or not, it, 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 there's, there's enough evidence that these platforms uh, and children's engagement on them is causing uh, heightened levels of, of a sort of a deleterious effect on, on their well-being. I'd love uh, it if we could do uh, such a hearing uh, sometime soon. We will follow up into the every patient's